if you have been living under the rock or just too busy crushing your code, let me catch you up real quick with Next.js. Yes, I'm not talking about Next.js, but Next.js, the powerhouse of React framework. And it just got turbo boosted with the launch of version 14. It's like Christmas came early for the developers and instead of gifts, we got performance boost, slick developers tools and a whole lot more. But before we jump into the nitty gritty, if you are new here or lurking in the shadow, then hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Now let's dive into the next 14 and see what all the hype is about. So let's get into the screen and see what's new in next 14. So we are in a next 14 blog and as you can see we have a, a link to the conference so this conference will take you this conference link will take you to the conference page where you can watch the whole conference as a recorded version then you can see a little bit of gist of what they are going to talk about so first update they have is about the turbo pack and they are basically showing you in numerics uh, the performance boost and then the second thing we have is the server auctions server actions and third partial rendering and then the next learn so let's go to the turbo pack and see next 14 comes with a lot of performance boost since they have migrated the turbo pack to a rust based compiler and as you can see they are claiming it is now up to 53.3 percent faster in local server setup and 94.7 percent faster update with the fresh data you will see this performance boost when you run the next js locally and um, basically what you have to use is uh, you have to pass a flag called next dev turbo and now these uh this performance uh, would be stable with that so a lot of performance and i want i really want you to try it so let's talk about the second thing which is a server action and let's see what it is so you remember in the, in next 13 or in previous version of next uh, they had this uh, server route where you can uh, define your backend endpoint basically you, you can just create an endpoint api endpoint and then you can just call that and uh, call the api just how you do it with some different uh, api so basically you, you can just create the api inside next server route see this is how you used to write the server side code in next.js but with the help of server actions let, let me just scroll it through let me just scroll it so that i can show you what i'm talking about so this is the server actions is now stable so this is what i call the reincarnation of php so as you can see now you don't need to write your backend code explicitly in the server route but instead what you can do you can just you can just start writing your server code inside your component just like the good old days in php so if i scroll down a little bit uh let, let's see yeah so you can see inside the function now you can write any backend code you want i don't know how much of a feature it is and how is it going to help people let's say you want to build some mvp in quick and dirty way so in this case just uh, connect your postgres sql or mysql and then just you can just write sql insert into db like that so it's not only just you can call the backend function but you can literally you can add your sql here so this is pretty neat if you wanted it then here you go while you are using server action please keep in mind that the server actions are integrated with app router model so uh, you will also be uh, getting the options such as revalidate uh, revalidate path revalidate cache so you can uh, revalidate your cache you can redirect you can uh, get the cookies and you can use other composables as well so this is a pretty good update and i think a lot of people uh, are going to like it mostly the indie hackers who just do not go with convention the people i saw writing tens of thousands of lines of code inside a single file so for those people this is going to be a game changer with that said let's uh, go to our next feature and let's see what they have to offer so the next feature is not yet released it's in preview it is about a partial uh, pre-rendering so let me let me tell you what it is so let's say you have let's just uh, take a let's just see the example of what they're saying so uh, let's say you have a you have an e-commerce store, uh, store and then uh, you have the shopping cart 
so the shopping cart has some asynchronous code which let's say fetch some data from the back end and while it does that you want to show some loading indicator so that your user doesn't get stuck in between so what you do basically in react there's this concept called suspense so you use a suspense and you give it a fallback and you give a component while the inner component gets rendered it will basically show you the uh, show you the fallback so this is a pretty neat feature in uh, react uh, so now you can just use this uh, uh, inside next and it would be uh, it would be uh, uh, partially pre-rendered what that means is basically when uh, you request when you make a request to the to the server uh, your skeleton would be pre-rendered right whatever you have in the inside the inside the suspense fallback would be pre-rendered and then it would wait for your shopping cart to be rendered so you see your html is partially getting pre-rendered so this is a nice feature and this is uh, I think uh, pretty cool to have and so if you scroll down a little bit you can see they are using the shopping cart and they are using and they are using uh, cookies and session to show you that uh, uh, that the partial rendering and how you can combine your dynamic component along with your static component and how it will automatically uh, pre-render the static component and uh, let your dynamic component sits there and gets rendered uh, automatically so this is a coming soon features if you want to try it i guess you can try it uh, in their alpha channel so go go and check that out and then the next feature we have is the metadata improvement so let's try to understand the metadata improvements so before your page gets rendered in the browser so the so the server sends few metadata information first to the browser for example the theme the color scheme and the viewport so in next 14 uh, they have decoupled the blocking and non-blocking metadata so now let's say only a small subset of metadata uh, are blocking so 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 when you see uh, you load a website it loads instantly right so what happens is uh, the the server sends them so the server sends them important metadata first and then the rest of the content so now the now with the next version 14 it makes sure that the important metadata are not blocking so you would not say you know you would not see the shifting of colors or flickering in the screens now the most anticipated update is regarding the learning resource from the next js so I think there are a lot of content around Next.js in the YouTube, in the Udemy, wherever you search Next.js, you will find a 10 hours long video, a 20 hours long video. So what my personal thinking is with with those kind of a long content, the, the, the main part of, you know, learning Next is get carried away. And instead what you learn is basically how to put together an app and use some different technologies and packages. So now if you want to learn Next.js, this is the official guide that I would recommend you to go to. So this will teach you everything about Next.js. This will teach you the Next.js app router, the styling, the optimize, optimization, navigation, page, theming, partial rendering, search and pagination and all the thing. And the best part, let me just take you to the, take you to the website. And the best part is uh, you will get a lot of templates and then let's say let's take an example of me i am coming from next family and now for me to adapt to next.js it would be very easy with this um with this particular resources now i can go to the resources i can see a, a bit of code i can try it in stack blades i can go and can take a boilerplate templates and if you go to the template page you'll see almost all the things you need to learn the next thing. I think if you go through these resources, I don't think you need any other paid courses. Keep in mind, I'm not against paid courses, but the amount of templates and the amount of content they have, I don't think anyone needs to go anywhere for learning next days. So yeah, there you go, next days 14. I hope you have liked the video and you'll also explore next 14. But if you have any question or suggestion, then please comment it down or you can join our discord channel this is jahid signing off